Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I have to add a fuel stabilizer yeah. to where it doesn't deteriorate. Um, but there'll be things to do, and there'll be brake pads to replace, there'll but be there, windshield but be wipers to replace. Right? I mean, there will be less. Well, I mean, but good. how much goes wrong on the oily bits in today's car? I mean, you, they never do anything on an engine I guess anymore. They, just like they don't do anything on a on a on an <laughs> yeah, automatic yeah. transmission. <laughs> 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 a carburetor yeah, job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know this. Who killed the carburetor? <laughs> <laughs> we've got um, we've got to replace your points, yeah. and while we were at it, we did the plugs <laughs> and, yeah. and so forth. I mean, that's gone. So, I think it'll be Voice about plugs the same and that people will get scratches and water. Yeah, I did that a couple of times. And uh, we hope the dealers sell accessories. We're, we're going to have all kinds of neat Volt accessories that you will want to own. Really? Is, there gonna, be, is there going to be a Volt body kit? No, yeah, but there'll, huh. be, there, there'll be all kinds of stuff that you could power <laughs> electrically. Uh, we'll have, um, you know, maybe photovoltaic blankets to where you, you're out having a picnic you put out your roll unroll your unroll your solar uh solar arrays plug them into the car and while you're, out at, while, while you're having the beach party your car is recharging we'll take all suggestions i think i have a big picture crazy no no but, but oh you again it's an interesting theory if 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 if, if ninety percent of a car is recycled, yes, and there's a whole whole business around people who are dismantling cars and you know redoing things with it, why couldn't GM get into that business? Just a second, and for a premium, sell, let's say, volts that are made out of old GM cars. The the recycled car, you get the really green. You get the people who really want to pay an extra five thousand dollars for a car that, that's totally recycled. All right. There's going to be a really big. There's going to be a really big story on this, but we're not going to tell you what it is yet. Okay, but you're already buying recycled yeah. cars every time you buy a car. Exactly, yeah. I mean. exactly, and and the problem with your scheme is the neighbors don't see that you've paid five thousand bucks more yeah. for a totally make them environmentally a pure car. Already, already our dealers are selling hybrid badges faster than they're selling Tahoe hybrids, okay? And it's not because thieves are prying them off. So if you added a special color or a special decal, um, very quickly other vehicles would be painted in that color. I, don't, I, I honestly don't think that works, but I thought you were going to um, ask a different question. Well, pretend I asked that. But he did. <laughs> That's another story for another day. Another story for another day. Well, um, so, speaking of the, the older GMs that are crushed, I'm just, I'm just wondering if you have any uh, um, sense of, the, like, the people who consider themselves brand loyalists, like GM brand loyalists, who are the enthusiast market, but yeah. who aren't necessarily going to buy a brand new Cobalt, or who aren't necessarily going to buy a Cobalt. You know, um, the Camaro guys and the GTO guys and the Corvette guys and, you know, people who have like a 57 Bel Air, like restored cars and stuff. I wonder if um, there's anything in your guys' strategy uh, about harnessing that, the enthusiast culture, the way, for example, Mopar has, if that's something that you can see connecting with going forward or if the strategy well, is more you know, we, we will, the even, though, even though I think it's, um, you know, right now, Maintaining the performance car, good old boys, um, the, sort of the, the Mopar lads in the case of Chrysler and the, the big block Chevy guys <laughs> and the Pontiac GTO guys, uh, they sort of gravitated to it naturally. They don't require any encouragement. And, and frankly, right now, it's just not one of our priorities. I mean, sort of maintaining the muscle car image right now is a hey. If it gets maintained, it's fine. If it doesn't, that's sad, but it's okay too because we cannot be preoccupied with the past and allow ourselves to be um, sort of pulled by nostalgia into working the old formula. What we really have to do is uh, we've got to be we've got to be firmly focused on the future and telling ourselves. Thanks to oil prices, thanks to environmental concerns, and thanks to government regulations, we are in a new world. And how are we going to deal with that new world? And whenever there's discontinuous change, some people are going to be left behind. And, uh, 
you know, 20 years from now, somebody's going to say, gosh, isn't it a shame? Remember how great the Camaro was and so forth? And you say, yeah, that's right. Well, that's it. But the it's question. just like there's, there's still fighter pilots who say, boy, the last great airplane they built was the P-51 Mustang. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and when the propellers came off, <laughs> yeah, that was, was it. That was the end of good so flying. The, the, the enthusiasm of the cross cars are like, no. No. No, 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 no. no. I mean, it's, that's, uh, and that's, he's smiling at me because because we were talking about this before, and that's and I was going to ask you, and it goes in with, I mean, I I don't necessarily agree that GM has sworn off the the collector car people because no the, the Camaro is pretty <coughs> looks like a '69 Camaro to he me. He's arguing that it's, that it's too retro. It's way too retro, <laughs> and I think that that that. Uh, Oh, but uh, it's not as retro as the uh, Challenger and, and oh, yeah. the Mustang. And I think that, and I, you know, I've got the Mustang sales uh, back to 1969, 1966, um, and Camaro sales uh, to show that actually the Mustang, despite everybody's saying that the retro Mustang has been such a success, it actually is not successful compared to their forward thinking looks that were the last general, you know, Fox bodies. Um, so, what I mean, it is retro because I mean, you look at the grill, and the grill is the grill is definitely it's, 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 it's reminiscent of. But it's rest, it, it's it resto is, mod. Wait a minute, it is a new design language, sure, and it is nowhere near as slavishly retro oh, sure, as yeah. the Mustang and the Challenger. Challenger. Which, th those two, or the I sometimes have it, I sometimes, depending on how they're painted and what accessories they have on them. I have trouble at first glance picking out whether it's an old one that somebody put modern wheels and tires yeah, it's, it's, on. It's, it's, only wheels and tires that you can go by usually. Yeah. In the or size. whether it's a new one. And uh, I have that problem with the Mustang uh, and, the, and the Challenger, which is not to say that they're not completely legitimate cars, but we deliberately stayed away from that. We had some early proposals that were in retrospect, way too close to the 67s sure. and 69s. And it was frankly Rick Wagner who said, why are we doing this? And we said, well, you know, it's kind of like Ford and Chrysler are doing. And Rick said, no, 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 let's not, let's not do that. Let's, because we're gonna sell this car all over the world. And we're gonna sell it in many parts of the world where people don't know what a 67 Camaro is. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna evaluate this as a either an attractive or unattractive sports group. So could we please come up with a design that um, not only reminds people of a '67 Camaro, but basically is a thoroughly new, a thoroughly new and attractive design? And, uh, and we have made, a, I think, a pretty radical departure to the point where all of the '67 and '69 Camaro loyalists write us and say. Congratulations, you sure. have totally screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is, it, is it going to come with a stick shift in its first run? I mean, some of our members have been wondering because, you know, the, um, the initial run of the Challenger is just going to be an automatic. So <laughs> I'm wondering if it's going to have a, a manual transmission available. It will have a manual transmission. It will have That is a good gotcha. question. And it reminds me of a question I wanted to ask you. Do you think that the manual transmission is going away? Um, and I, yeah, I it's, 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 I, it's, it's basically going away. Why is it going away? It's basically yes, going because away. Because of this. <laughs> because, uh, I hate that. The well, gas I hate that. too. We, we, all, we all hate it. We all love manual transmissions, but the, the fact is it's so hard to meet emissions with a manual transmission. Oh, I didn't know that. It's, yeah. it's worse on emissions? Yes. Oh, yeah. Way, 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 way bad. Why is that? Yeah. Well, because with an automatic transmission, um, you can control the shift points with software. Just like a Toyota transmission. So we can pick the shift points on the acceleration schedule. Uh, to where we never quite close the throttle and so forth. Whereas, if you're driving a manual, you come out of first, you lift your foot off the throttle, it closes, and you've noticed that on modern manuals, instead of the fuel shutting off right away, it kind of goes, you know, it, the, the RPMs don't drop suddenly, they drop gradually. That's because we put a... Um, like a governor. No, it's a, like a, a viscous damper in yeah. there to prevent the throttle from closing too fast, which in turn 
causes you to have long shifts or you're overriding the synchronizers in second gear.